really this idea about uh, cooperation and co-creation I'm talking to the choir today because you know what that looks like this spiritual community is all about understanding the lyrics of the song that we play this idea that it is I'll tell you one thing the lyric says I'll tell you one thing it's always better when we're together and that's just the truth it's the truth you know that uh, no man is an island thing we've all got our individual journeys but coming together to create a resonant field of energy to support one another is hugely important so that's what we've been talking about this whole month this idea of how do we actually navigate our human walk in the world on this shared planet this planet that we share with other human beings with other creatures with all the living sentient stuff on our planet and how do we create a, a planet that's going to sustain us through our own activity we've kind of created some issues ecologically uh, socially culturally we don't have a lot of peace in certain areas of our of our world and actually even in our own country we see what it looks like when people are you know having struggles with ideas and and feeling separate so you know this is a real real important topic because we are all in a human walk in the world we're all wearing a people suit we're all here to embrace our humanity and we're all here to remember the truth of who we really are which is this this higher self this this one of us that is part of the divine energy that God is and so it's really a dance it's a dynamic dance with that with that sacred part of ourselves that sacred I and with the human part of ourselves that walks in the world and does the stuff human beings do and it's really really a gift if through very deep spiritual practice and awareness and all kinds of, of maybe uh, techniques and tools and just just pure consciousness we're able to align our human walk in the world with our sacredness in such a way that it shows up beautifully creating and co-creating our planet so we have to understand that every single thing supports the next thing we cannot like our web our interest net says we can't have a problem over here without it eventually in one way or another energetically or you know if it's a toxic spill someplace eventually it, it trickles it goes everywhere every single thing is dependent on the other we support each other we lift each other up and when something happens we have a tendency to bring each other down too we can do both so our work is to figure out how do we lift how do we lift I love the statement that um, Anna Dea Judith makes in her book she says nothing is itself without everything else think about that nothing is itself without everything else everything's in context everything is part of a greater whole absolutely everything is and so we have an immense responsibility to recognize that and then to live the words of Mahatma Gandhi to be the change if we see areas in our own lives or in our families in our communities in the world we have the responsibility to be the change in those areas that moves us in the direction of creating more care more compassion and a more beautiful world we all have that responsibility each and every one of us and let me tell you when we come together like we do in community in an intentional spiritual community when we come together that intention is magnified it, it it gets very large and so in order to create the changes that we're going to need in our own lives I don't know about you and I won't ask you to raise your hand but I know for a fact there are many in this room whose lives have changed because they've come to spiritual community of common ground their lives have changed because of the cooperative energy and the field this resonant field of love care and compassion that is created by each and every being that comes here so that we do our personal healing we do our personal growth and then guess what happens when we have that we take it with us wherever we go you see and so 
we have this opportunity to come together to create a healthy change, not only for ourselves, but for our families, for our city, for our nation, for our world, you see. Then this is our humanity. We get to choose how we walk in the world. We get to choose how we show up. And part of it is this incredible, this incredible awareness. You know, the oxharding pictures in the Buddhist tradition, the Zen tradition, the ultimate end of the journey, so to speak, is not an end at all. This spiritual work that we do, we do all of our, our growth, we do our going into the you know, mountaintop and into the cave and all this stuff, and then guess what we do? We come back into community with bare feet, empty hands, ready to serve the whole, ready to cooperate and create a new energy wherever we go. It's that. So we get it that our spiritual journey is not all about us. It's not just about me. It's about all of us. And when we have this understanding that we can create a beautiful resonant field that is filled with care and compassion and love and harmony and peace and beauty, and we do it together for everybody, things get very different. Things get very different. And so this is it. They, there's a, has anybody heard the word cultural creatives? Yes, this is the time when we have an opportunity to step into the invitation to have an awareness, a cultural awareness that thinks of the whole, everybody, not just myself. Now when you look around and you see the presence of so much greed and so much self-interest on the planet, maybe even in our own families, when you see these things happening in our, in our environment, it takes a lot for us to remember that is our invitation to create a new way of thinking and to think of the whole, to think of everybody, not just me. And really, not just me and mine, but me and everybody. Yeah. Me and you, me and my family, your family, our family, everybody's family, all the children at school, all the children at Orangewood, all the people that are you know, walking the streets. It's about all of us, you see. And then, within that, as part of my humanity, I get to understand that my human walk in the world is important. Who I am, how I am, what I do, what I think, it is extremely important because I am, even though I don't focus all of my efforts on me, that I have to understand that I am an essential piece of the life of the planet. I am an essential piece of life's sacred purpose. I am that. And i got to do my part. I have to willingly participate, set an intention to be that. To be that. That's why we decided for the first time in nine years that we wanted to create a culture of awareness around bringing something new, not only to our community, but to lift the vibration. That's why we're doing National Day of Prayer. We've never done it before. This is the year to do it. We need to set an intention to participate, to participate. My participation is essential. Our participation is in essential in creating a new world, a new something different. To bring our distinct contribution to the experience of life, to the whole. And you know what? Every one of us lives at the core of our being the qualities of the divine. Every one of us knows how to live love. Every one of us knows how to live care. Every one of us knows how to live compassion. Every one of us knows how to be creative and find new ways of being in the world. Every one of us has that part of our walk in the world, that divine part that knows how to move away from anger and hatred and judgment and separation. So I recognize my part in this you know, on this beautiful blue pearl planet, I recognize that who I am and how I am makes a difference. And that it's important for me to come into cooperative creation with all of you, with other people who have the same intention so that we open the field of possibilities for peace. We open the field of possibilities for a more beautiful experience of life, more beneficial. This idea of dancing with the whole and finding meaning within that, not just my own little personal journey. 
very important. You know, science tells us, I love this, this is all information from Anna Dave's Judith's book. Science tells us survival is not necessarily for those who are most aggressive, competitive, or powerful. Science tells us that the most symbiotic and cooperative relationships are the ones that are sustainable, that are surviving. The ones that come together to create, that come together and share resources to create community. They come together and share ideas to create new ways of being in the world. It's the creativity and the cooperation and the energy of the willingness to be interdependent and recognize that interdependence that makes a difference. Nature sustains itself by creating communities. And I don't think anything is more, more of a model than those elephants that created that circle of care and compassion to lift that baby out of that drowning situation. Nature creates communities to sustain itself, to work together, to cooperate. Ants do it, bees do it, meerkats do it, the entire biosphere does it, and people do it. People do it. And one of my very favorite examples, and I've talked about it before here, which is why I have this image behind me, are penguins do it. Do you know, and this is such an example for us, do you know that penguins, do you know how they stay warm? They huddle. And the way they huddle is, it's so darn cold where they are, and usually the father penguins have the eggs on their feet while they're doing this, by the way. They all huddle together. Now this is what's interesting. They don't just huddle together so that the me in the middle gets the warmest, no. They huddle together, but they're constantly doing a dynamic dance. Their little feet are going like this the whole time. And you know why their little feet are going like this the whole time? Because there's a, a certain cooperative wave that goes through the penguin huddle, and they all take their turn. They all take their turn in the cold. They all take their turn in the middle. They rotate, they share, they cooperate. And they understand that if they don't do this, they're going to die. And so they all, nobody has to be cold for any length of time, any longer length of time than the next guy, right? Because they've got a cooperative, creative way to deal with this freezing temperature where they just keep going, they just keep, you know, their feet just keep moving, and they take their turns. See, the evolution of, of species and the sustainability of species the evolution of cultures, our personal evolution, it is not a competitive struggle. It's a cooperative dance in which creativity and constantly emerging novelty are the driving forces. To me, that's pretty novel, how those penguins figured out that if they just kept on moving, kept on doing the dance, and kept on rotating, they created a sustainable community. Think about that in your own life. What do you need to do to huddle together to create something new? Key question is, what do I choose to create? What do I choose to create, and how can I make it happen? That's the question. That's the question that Anna Dea Judith raises. What kind of relationships am I creating? And are my relationships about controlling and dominating, or are they about cooperation and co-creation, like the penguins, see? And so as I close my talk, I want to share with you, so funny because Glenda sends me her image every week when, uh, so that I can put it on the, the uh, presentation. And she sent me an image and I said, I know exactly what you're talking about because I'm talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Talking about the same thing. David, give me the next uh, slide. Talking about geese. Look to the geese for answers. See, we've been talking about this beautiful planet all, all month and get, letting nature be our, our teacher, letting you know, how the natural world deals with things. Well, you know what? Geese teach us five things. Geese, geese teach us five things. First thing, they all, they fly in a V formation. They, when they flap their wings, they create an up, an upwind. And when they create this upwind, guess what? It allows them to continue to fly together with less energy so that they're all supporting each other. They can fly 71% further in a group than they can alone. Isn't that amazing? And they understand this, and they know how to cooperate and create this V so that they, they sustain each other. So, so the lesson is cooperation benefits everybody. We, we use each other's energy. We share our energy with each other. 
Now this is the other thing, they know how to stay in formation. They know if they don't cooperate and that they don't stay together with their group, if they stray off or if they, you know, they get sidetracked, they re meet a lot of resistance and it's hard. Think about your own life. When you're off course, life gets hard. So the lesson is, when we're cooperating with people that are heading in the same direction we're heading in, and make an intentional community in the case of Common Ground, make a, a loving, creative family unit, if that's what your deal is, or whatever, your work situation, whatever, when we do that and we're headed in the same direction, we have less resistance. We have this energy that pulls us all. When the lead goose gets tired, guess what? It goes to the back of the line. Somebody else takes over. They, they share responsibility. It's a shared experience. So if you think you can do it all by yourself and you're the only one, think about the geese. They know. They take turns. They share. Guess what? All the geese in the rear, you know what they do? They honk. They honk because they want to rally all the guys in front of them. It's their job. Keep going, guys. You're doing a good job. That's our job. To lift each other up, not to bring each other down with negativity and gossip and junk. To lift each other up. Geese know this. Get going. And then this is important. This is very important. When one of the geese gets sick or wounded and can't fly anymore, two other geese go down with that one that is in trouble. And guess what they do? They stay with that one until that one is either able to fly or is no longer alive. They protect, they care, they have compassion, and they create a safe haven, a safe place for one another. This is the lesson the geese teach us. When we cooperate, we share our energy, we increase care, we increase our compassion, we create a better life for everybody. We create a better life for everybody. So remember, whatever happens to one of us happens to all of us eventually. Whatever happens to the earth happens to all of us. Step into the immense responsibility of being the change that you want to see in your part of the world, whatever that is, family, work, personal, whatever. Remember that this work that we do is not about us. It's not about me. It's about all of us. And remember to take the invitation to actually step into the whole of life so that we can create a new earth like Eckhart Tolle would say, and a new way of being. And I'll tell you one thing, like that song says, it's always better when we're together.